brought to you by Allstate, whose policies now include protection for your home, your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with Allstate. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Left the marvelous panelist of To Tell the Truth, who to opens tomorrow night in the Broadway show Come Blow Your Horn, Mr. Tom Poston. It's awfully nice to be here. Especially, I want to thank all of those people who are forced to watch because I told them I was going to be on the show. It's my privilege at this time to introduce a young lady who's going to take over the Tonight Show starting tomorrow. She's just returned to us from Florida, our own Mrs. Universe, Arlene Francis. Thank you, Tom. As the queen mother for the Miss Universe contest, <laughs> I would like to say that no matter where I go out of town, and I go many places, everyone always says, is Bennett Cerf really as nice as he seems? He's nicer, he's dearer, and he's ours. Mr. Bennett Cerf. Thank you, Arlene. You were the prettiest girl in the contest. Sure, baby. <laughs> here at the very apex of his mid-season form, our dapper, debonair, sometimes devious panel moderator, John Charles Daly. Well, in my usual debonair way, I'll make the panel happy immediately by telling the panel that uh, It'll be nice if you would prepare yourselves to put on your blindfolds. We're departing from the usual a bit tonight, and you'll have your blindfolds on for our first guest. We'll also have a famous mystery challenger a bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger. And now it's time to meet our first challenger, but I must make sure, first of all, that the panel is blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, oh, panel? Yes, yes John. Yes. All right, would our first challenger enter and sign in, please? All right. I would like to ask, if I may, if you're familiar with our scorekeeping system. I think so. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that our guest is salaried and deals in a service, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Um, Mr. or Miss Guest, may I assume that I do not know you personally? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I can go on now. Yes. Or are you related to, uh, is your fame, or the reason why we're blindfolded, related to any sport or athletic endeavor? Yes. Is the sport something that can be performed indoors? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Poston. Uh, it, 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 it is a sport. Were you, uh, uh, did you recently participate in, uh, 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 an old-timer's day? No. no. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. We're assuming there that you were asking specifically if uh, participation in an old-timer's day had some relevance to old time. That's why you've got your no. Miss Francis? This is a sport that is performed out of doors. Is it um, a sport uh, indigenous to this season, such as baseball? Yes. 
Um, are you a player in baseball? Yes. Are you in the National League? Yes. Are you... Uh, who's in town, Bennett? I've been away. Are, <laughs> are you a member of my darling team, the Giants? Yes. Did you ever have a hat that used to fly off your head and they'd say, hey, hey? <laughs> <laughs> the yes. giant that is my dream man is Willie Mays. Are you he? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. well, thank you, Andrew, yeah. for that. Sorry, I'm afraid you are at a grave disadvantage <laughs> here because I know at least three real baseball fans on that panel. Two Willie Mays fans, too. Yeah. Willie Mays fans, Mostly too. Willie well, Mays. I gave you five five questions, but it seemed like you asked me quite in a hurry there. Yeah, that has to be in a hurry. Well, yeah. I know Willie wants this to be given to some worthy cause, so we'll flip all those over. But, Willie, I had the good luck this week to go down to Washington to see the All-Star game. Ford Frick was nice enough to ask us down. And that was a catch you made on Maris's what I thought was going to be a home run that gave the National League that game, as far as I'm concerned. Who are you? Thank you very much. But you know something, John? I, I received a, a letter pertaining to that game, and they called me showboat for even catching the ball. You know, I, <laughs> I can't understand it because uh, if I'd have missed the ball, if he, he could have called me a showboat then. I would say this, Willie. If they want to call that showboating, I trust you keep on showboating every <laughs> afternoon. John, John could I ask Willie a question? Yeah. Uh, Willie, do you think you're going to catch the, the Dodgers? We're trying. I don't know. You know pretty tough, uh, they got a pretty tough pitching staff, haven't they? Very much so. They have a lot of speed and a lot of pitching. Over. Who do you think is better, Koufax or Drysdale? Well, I haven't hit, hit either one this year, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you will. You will. Well, you will know. for sure. Well, Willie, I know you had a double header today. Uh, rather, that second game was a kind of a tough one. In the eighth inning there, I was a little bit... Uh, I was expecting the roof too, would blow off the I park. I'm scared. Anytime you know? uh, we, go, we have to use our stars to uh, come in and stop a ball club, okay. you have to be scared. John. Things are running. You have to run scared. But I did uh, want to explain that Willie played a doubleheader today. I think you finished your play until close to, to about, about nine nine thirty, so that uh, we were a little worried he wouldn't be able to make it tonight. But uh, as a good soldier, he was here right on time. And I'm just sorry we didn't give the panel a little bit more trouble, but. Uh, Again, I hope you go on showboating for the next 25 years. And thanks Thank you, very much, Thank Willie. Lovely to have you here. That was a real fan. Now let's meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Our... Shenum, is that right, sir? That is correct. What does that R stand for? Robert. Robert. And where are you from, Mr. Shenum? Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Nice to have you with us. Mr. Shenum, may I present our panel? Now, would you join me over here, please, sir? Uh, do you know how we keep score on What's My Line? Yes. Fine. Then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. panel, we can tell you that our guest is salaried. Uh, he deals, I think, basically in a service, but there is very closely allied to the service a product, so you can walk any road you wish in this particular instance. And let's begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Mr. Chairman, is, um, is your service anything that might be of use to the members of the panel? Yes. Would we come to you for this service? No. Uh, to me personally? No, I think you meant, meant it to uh, Mr. Shannon personally. On that basis, we have to give you a no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mr. Shenning, are you then a member of some kind of a larger organization that the people might come to the organization with whom you're connected rather than to you personally for the service? Is that yes. correct? Does this organization perform uh, a useful service to... Uh, things rather than the people? No. No. Two down a day to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is there anything educational about what you do, Mr. Shenham? 
Yes. It has, it has a relationship, potentially, certainly, to the field of education. This is not to say that it's entirely restricted to an educational purpose. So, uh, could uh, members of both sex avail themselves of your services? Yes. I think I'd like to get down to this product now. Could we use the product, too? You could use it. Yes, I it. think so, yes. Uh, is it anything that I could hold in my hand? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Puston. I assume that you do not deal directly with the people who avail themselves of this service. Is that correct, Mr. Shannon? That is correct. Do you, in the course of your work, are you required to be outdoors more than indoors? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything electronic about the product with which you work? Yes. Is it a, a product that has been uh, mentioned in the newspapers of late? Mm, I think yes. Uh, does it have anything to do with communications in any way? Yes. Would it have been associated in uh, the Telstar experiments that we have had? Yes. Well, it's a jolly good product, I want to tell you that. <laughs> Thank you. I don't care if we can't buy it at the grocers, I just think it's sensational. Um, you have something to do no, with no. the transmission, perhaps, of uh, microwaves and so forth, as far as Telstar is concerned? Mm, not really, no. No, I wouldn't say no. so. No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Mr. Sir. Did you have anything whatever to do with the construction of the Telstar? Yes. Uh, are you one of the people who helped design and plan and uh, execute the Telstar? Uh, very good, Bennett. I'm going to throw them all over. Mr. Shedham was head of the design and construction of the, of the Telstar satellite. He was Which is what, 34 inches about? That is correct, yes. Doesn't seem possible. You know how far that is? That's that big. That's rather small. And we got a message from Brittany and from France. Good Hilly Downs. Really fantastic. One of the how, greatest strides. How long did it take to build the Telstar, Mr. Shedham? About one year. Well, now, duplicates will be able, you'll be able to make duplicates much more quickly now that you know how to do it, won't you? We have two more now, exactly right. the same as the one in orbit. Mr. Poston? My, uh, one of the young ladies who is starring with me in Come Blow Your Horn, Natalie Ross, do you know her, Mr. Shannon? No, I do not. She's married to a gentleman who had quite a bit to do with some specific instrument in the Telstar. Miller, I think his name is. Yes, I'm afraid I'm not, uh... Well, I can't it may, may not be Miller. How Hers much, may I ask one more question? Uh, we want to make a quiz program out of this, Mr. Shannon. How much does a Telstar cost delivered to AT&T? What would about be the cost of one of these uh, fantastic instruments? Just about one million dollars, even. Send me a half a dozen on approval. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's one thing that does need to be said. Uh, I suppose, really, that the success that you've had with your baby, if you don't mind that kind of a colloquial phrase, this week is the most startling thing that's happened in communication since Morse's first uh, message by telegraph. And it's, it's success far uh, outshone the hopes that you had for it, I take it, in the, in the short term. It certainly has done everything we thought it could, yes. And I, I must say, Bennett, I think this will interest you. It took one year to build it, but I think you've got how many years of research behind this? Oh, at least 15. It's hard to say where the starting research, point was. Sure. Well, it's a remarkable performance that uh, I don't think the public ever really had a chance to catch up with. First of mm -hmm. all, that great transmission from Andover up in Maine, which, which I saw, in which the picture was as clear as the picture the public is seeing tonight of, of What's My Line. And then the French and the British tumbling all over each other to be the first <laughs> ones to get back here. Well, Bell Laboratories, I, I know, is extraordinarily happy, and I'm sure you are. And may I say that uh, all of us would like to say a word of great congratulations and also of gratitude to you for putting these United States way out in front in that particular area. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, in effect, tonight's second mystery celebrity. And, of course, the panel is, as usual, blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Will you enter, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> All right. 
As you know, panel, we have a different form of questioning this trip. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with, uh... <laughs> must, must be the bird man of Alcatraz. The bird man of Alcatraz, right, and flat at that. Let's begin the general questioning with Mr. Surf. Well, unless the audience is deliberately misleading us, those whistles might indicate that our mystery guest is a rather lovely-looking lady. Is that correct? <laughs> Wrong, huh? No. <laughs> what down at night to go, Miss Kilgallen? Uh, are you in show business? I think so. Mr. Poston, do you perform in uh, television, sir? Partly. Miss Francis? Are you performing at the present time in New York City? No. Uh, let me have a small conference here. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Are you starring in one of the companies or one of the troops that are doing summer stock in theaters in and about this vicinity? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, did your image appear tonight in a rerun of a show that you did earlier this year? I wasn't watching, but I don't think so, no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Poston. Do you work with musical accompaniment? Yes. Would you be considered a singer, therefore? Therefore, yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Are you under 30 years of age? <laughs> yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you Paul Anker? Yes! <laughs> that was another one we had to breathe hard. Actually, Paul has just finished, and that's why I asked for a conference a moment ago. He's just finished a, a week at Freedom Land, which is yes. just in the edge of New York City, as you all know, but he was finished tonight, so that's... Uh, we could say that he wasn't presently appearing in this immediate area. An old friend of mine named Cornelius Ryan wrote a book called The Longest Day. And you, mm -hmm. you were in that, and I believe you also provided some music for it, didn't you? We've uh, just finished writing the 14 minutes of music that will take part in the three and a half hour picture. Oh, that's wonderful. Sing to yeah. us, Paul. Sing to you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I've been singing at Freedom Land for four shows, and as you can hear, I could have <laughs> talked with this voice. I'm halfway down and out of my voice. Yes, yes Dorothy. I understand that the people at the studio who are making The Longest Day think that Paul's music is going to come up to the standards of Bridge on the River Kwai and be just as popular as the march from that was. Oh, great. It may win I an Academy so. Award. I hope so. Well, Paul, I hope so, too. Well, I must say, Paddle, you've done extraordinarily well so far tonight, and I offer my congratulations. We'll give you another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet a final contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? Jack? Lambert, right, sir? Lambert, where are you from? New Jersey. From New Jersey? Union City. Oh, Union City, nice to have you with us. That's practically next door, isn't it? Mr. Lambert, may I present our panel? Hello. Now, would you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score, Mr. Lambert? Yes, I can see. All right, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Our guest is self-employed and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Tom Post. Thank you. A lot of good things come from New Jersey. You know, it's funny, John. I'm so used to doing to tell the truth that I'm tempted to ask him questions to see if he's the real Jack Lambert. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to play it this other way. You well, deal we'll in services. Is. is that correct, Jack? Pardon me? We'll guarantee he's the real Jack Lambert. Real Jack Lambert. You deal in services. Is that correct? 
Do yes. you deal with people directly when you perform your services? Yes. Do you deal uh, with women and men? Yes. You don't deal more with one than the other, is that correct? No. Uh, it, no, it is not correct. You, in other words, you don't... It's six up and a half a dozen down is what we're trying to convey. <laughs> Do you perform these services directly for your, for your, uh, this, those seeking your services? Yes. You meet them, in other words. Are they made happier by this, may I ask? I would say sometimes. Sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say sometimes. I think we could safely say that if Mr. Lambert <laughs> pervades the service with his usual skill, there is a sense of uh, well-being we will hope. Let's put it that way. Is the service performed directly on the people who come to see you? Well, I think in a very general way, we can say that the service, yes. to the degree that it can be performed upon, is in this instance performed directly in connection with, yes. Do you wear uh, uh, any clothing for while you're doing this other than a business suit? Oh, yes. Definitely. You do? Is the nature of the clothing wait, protected? Wait, wait, just a minute. Let me have a small thing. <laughs> yes, I wear any clothing. <laughs> I thought perhaps you hadn't gotten the last part of that question. <laughs> Mr. Lambert took your question to be, do you wear any clothing? <laughs> Do you wear any clothing other than normal street clothes? You don't, do you? No. No. That makes it one color. We, we know he's not an artist's model, anyway. Are you finished? Yeah, he is. I got a $5 note. He, he wears the same clothing that he might have on now, then. Right. 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 Um, do you come in personal contact with the people that come for your services? Do you touch Sometimes. them in any way? Sometimes. You might touch them. Is there anything instructive about your work? <laughs> or destructive? <laughs> no, I think we'd have to say no to that. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Lambert, do you give these people anything tangible while you're performing the service for them? Do you hand them anything, such as food or drink or some kind of material? Sometimes. Would your uh, work be in any way connected with either the restaurant or catering business? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are people sometimes made unhappy by what you do, Mr. Lambert? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do you ever have anything to do with um, a lawsuit, perhaps? <laughs> no. No, that's four down and six to go, Mr. Poston. Does your work require you to be outdoors more than indoors? Definitely. In other words, it is a seasonal occupation? Yes. Let me I say it tends to follow a season, yes. yes. It's, uh, More uh, warm weather than, say, cold weather. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Is it in the nature of uh, an activity such as a sport? No. no. Five down and five to go. You want to try one, Miss Harley? We're about run out of time. Well, I just wondered if there was anything entertaining or amusing attached to what he does. Would he yes. perform ever yes. in an amusement park, for example, or yes. an entertainment run, center? Run the wind machine at a oh, carnival or something? Yes. That's too hard for me to find a feet in front of the Well, it, but he does, does work in an amusement park. He Tunnel of blows love. Blows up the skirts in the amusement park? Uh, no, he gets his weight at an amusement oh. park. It's Palisades. <laughs> I asked him what my weight was, and he said it's wonderful. <laughs> now you can see why he makes people happy yes. sometimes. And on that happy note, good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Tom. Please come again. Thank you. You outsmarted me again, you devil. Good night. Good, good night, night, Arlene. Happy come blow your horn. Good Thank night. You. Good night, John. How much do you weigh, John? When? <laughs> now, right now. Oh, right now, I would say a hundred and sixty-eight and a half. How much Soaking do you weigh? You look then? every pound of it. I think that's <laughs> There's a rude remark that can be made at this time, which I'm not allowed to make. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What My Line. What's My Line? Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Carelessness still causes nine out of ten forest and range fires. So remember, let's be careful. Only you can prevent forest fires. What's 
My Line. Brought to you by Allstate.